YouTube show. What do you feel like have been the main changes in the way you're approaching plant care and your routines? Okay, so I will start with one I'm pretty excited about. Okay. I started this maybe a year or so ago. Um, and I guess I call it rack systems, uh, using that term loosely. I'll try to add some color here. But, you know, like most of us, we start with a few plants, right? As we get more, our plants will migrate to places that are a bit harder to water. Like they will go to sunny spots that are far from the sink maybe, or mm -hmm. they'll go to those high shelves, you know, that look really pretty, but then, you know, maybe those shelves are sensitive. Maybe it's like wood that you don't want water to be on. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I was looking around YouTube uh, in this, at the succulent growers channel, he had these racks. It's like kind of like a, like a shallow crate. He had all of the plants in there. So he had many little plants that he would just move all at once to the sink, water them all at once and then just kind of put it back. And it's and a rack with holes in the bottom. So the water exactly. runs through the holes. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of like a little sort of shallow crate. Like a um, nursery tray almost. Yeah. But you know, it, it, maybe that sounds kind of unattractive at first, right? But there are so many cool ones that you can find at organization stores, right? Like here in the US, it would be like, you know, the container store or something mm -hmm. like that. Oh um, yeah, the like wire mesh ones kind exactly. of like you, you can see find in the wire. alpha systems. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can find copper ones. And even if you just do this with a few plants, I think you can really uh just cut down on your trips. And I think then it just it just ends up being health you just end up having healthier plants, right? Because you don't avoid the 10 trips you would otherwise take. You're like, oh I, I know I need to water today. Um you can cut that down to three or something like that, even with some of them. Mm -hmm. Uh I mean that's been kind of a game changer for me. Yeah, and that was an idea that Stephen mentioned when we, uh, I think it was a season two uh, premiere for us, episode 57, where we talked about plant efficiencies like early on in our podcast. And he was doing like some similar kind of tray methods where he could just take a whole tray just to the water uh, source at the sink and everything. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've been lazy for years is what you're saying. Right? <laughs> You've been efficient for years, Stephen. Efficient <laughs> for years. Uh -huh. Thanks, yeah. you guys. But I totally ran with that idea and I just invested in these really heavy duty black seedling trays. They are not like, you know, devastatingly handsome decor or anything, mm -hmm. but they're innocuous. They're just black, flat Utilitarian trays. Utilitarian kind of, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, I use these on my grow racks. So like I have like, you know, two, two nursery flats. Uh, on each shelf and then I have smaller pots in front so you don't even really notice that they're there but I grouped them like each each shelf of the grow rack has a different light exposure for the plants there so the plants are grouped by their light and then they're also grouped so that they have individual so that they have the same watering needs per tray and so for instance this is like the plants that need a little bit more consistent moisture that might be potted in general all-purpose mixes I'll often just flood the tray with some water to bottom water them. Sometimes I might pour a little bit of water into the top of the soil as well. Uh, and then plants that are grown in more like chunky or airy or gritty substrates that don't wick moisture very well, like succulents and orchids, mm -hmm. I'll just pour the water directly through that and then it collects in the tray below. So you have to be careful to not overwater because mm -hmm. um, I don't really want the orchids to sit in an inch of water perpetually. That's not great. but I've kind of figured out this routine where I can just quickly fill up the watering can, which I actually do with the tub. I find that the uh, the bathtub spigot is the quickest way to fill a gallon mm -hmm. watering it's a can. Show. Yeah. yeah, lots of shower uses for plants. Mm -hmm. But that way I can just fill the watering can, go use like a gallon of water per shelf and just kind of go through and quickly do that. And what this does is it basically allows me to make sure that a large number of plants, especially ones that are different sized pots that are grouped together, they all get their needs met without me having to specifically think about them as individuals most of the yeah. time. Mm -hmm. And then it also helps to boost the humidity in the room because you've got all that water that's drained. There's, you know, kind of that corrugation on the bottom so that there's extra water that the plants aren't sitting in. So yeah. as that evaporates, it boosts my humidity. I also don't really worry too much if there is excess water drained in the bottom when I'm done watering, because if I come back in an hour or two, not all of the moisture that could soak into the substrate has initially. And that just gives it time for all that additional kind of uh, 
capillary action to take place so that within an, you know a few hours of me watering most of that water is already you know absorbed back into the pots it's it's pretty convenient it's pretty easy and it just took a little bit of trial and error to figure out what the right amount of water per tray typically was to not have there be an excess of it but to really make it quick and easy do, 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 do,